have a how-to that I thought it would be really good for you to answer. So this is no mm-hmm. one else but me that mm-hmm. came up with this one. So being a sexologist, uh, I came from a family where we were very openly spoke about sex mm. and we were educated about it mm. and um, spoken about condoms and things like that from the right ages. So this how-to is how and when to talk to your kids about sex from the mother of a sexologist. Well, I was always told that you start talking about sex when they start asking you questions, when kids start being inquisitive and want to know. But I don't ever remember asking questions. Oh, yeah. I remember you, it always being a subject that we could speak about. I actually remember being in the car once. Yeah, no, what happened <laughs> was that you sort of had what they called, so-called sex education at school. This is body parts. Yes, but that brought up questions and that prompted you to start asking questions and that prompted our conversations. But did you never... Okay, if you've got a kid that's really maybe introverted and shy and they start getting to puberty and they're not asking questions, do you then jump in and start talking to them about it? You do, and unfortunately in this day and age with people that we've got around, people like pedophiles and things like that, unfortunately we have to start talking to kids younger about sex and sex education because they have to know the right to from what's right from wrong and that's very important. And I think it's very bad as a parent if you can't talk to your kids about sex education or sex. There are books, there I'm sure now there's videos, there's all sorts of things that you can use to help you. I don't believe it's solely the responsibility of the parent parents or the school. I think it's a combined responsibility between the parents and the school but I believe in sex education in the school I think that's very important and as I said that's where a lot of the questions and a lot of the discussion started but what advice would you have because it can be quite a daunting and embarrassing subject and I think also too you know you know touching on the whole idea of you know that's when you that's when you use books and things like that and you read your kids stories or if you feel you can't say it or you're not going to say it properly or tell them things properly or in the correct way or whatever there are plenty of there's there is plenty of material and tools out there that can help you and and lead you in the right path but i think it's very important i think it's very remiss if if a parent doesn't do that i mean it's horrible for a, a child boy girl to find out or to discover things online Online, yes, someone. online and, and the wrong way, you know. It's it's the responsibility of a parent. The difference is, when I grew up, we didn't have the porn era that we have at the moment. You know, it wasn't a worry. Like, we didn't have phones. We didn't have the internet on our phones. We didn't have the internet. So that's what I'm saying. Kids are being exposed to sex or sexual things at a very young age. So don't you think that and they need, need to, to do know. this young... Say yes. then what you yes. did. Yes, It needs to be done younger yes. because... I was trying to think, when did we get the internet? I remember being in grade 8 and having a Hotmail account, but not like fast-speed internet you or anything like that. You should learn these things from your parents before you're exposed to it anywhere else. But then what or happens... So I'm going to challenge you on this. Oh, so dear. you said originally that you should talk to kids when they start asking questions. Yes. But if we then go to the idea that kids these days, in comparison to how when me and my brother were growing mm. up, have the internet and are exposed to things, so therefore parents need to have these conversations with them earlier, then don't you think that there's a point where parents should be talking about it earlier, especially if we're talking about what they might find online? rather than waiting for them to ask the questions because, hang on, by talking about it earlier, are you not opening up that gateway to say, now you can ask me any questions because this is a safe space? But that's what I'm sort of saying. Normally it's taught earlier at school. Yes. Something, something. I'm not, I don't think it's taught completely at school, but something is taught at a very early age, like with you as a junior school. And it, it's, um, what was it, Harold the... Oh, healthy Harold. Things like that. That's still going. Go healthy Harold. But that sort of starts the conversation and from there it flows on. And if your child comes home from there and starts asking questions and you feel you can't answer it or don't have the proper tools to answer in the correct way, 
then you get your books. But that's how I think it sort of starts. And that starts at an early age because schools and in, uh, educational institutions realise, or most of them do, that kids need to be taught at a younger age. You know, there was I, none of that in my, my day at all. I, where did, who taught you about oh. sex? <laughs> we, <laughs> so. I was taken to a film called Helga, and that was my sex education. What age? I'd say I was about 12 or 13. Okay, I'm going to look up this film, Helga. I want to see. It's probably still floating around. I have no idea. And that was it. And Who took you? One of my aunts. Just took you and sat you there? Mm-hmm. Okay. Do you know, I still remember... Nothing. We got nothing. We got nothing I'm, in the school. I want to know what nothing. Helga... I want to know yeah. what Helga was all It'll about. be interesting. So I still remember being in grade two or... I think it was about two. Mm-hmm. Junior school, really young. And we had our sex ed teacher, which mm. was we called Mrs. Body Parts, who did have a real name, but we'd nicknamed her Mrs. Mrs. Charters. That's it, Shona Charters. If you're still around, hello, Mrs. Charters. But we did call you Mrs. Body Parts. And For obvious reasons. <laughs> yeah, because they used to write up on the wall yeah. the body parts. And I, so, I don't know why I have this memory, but she asked the question if two people, and then we were very heteronormative, so I think it was a man and a woman, are having sex but the woman doesn't want to get pregnant very progressive really when you think for this age what can they do now i had ken dolls right and i thought i knew everything ken and barbie Mm -hmm. so i remember putting out my hand and i said the man can wear his undies clearly i didn't at that point really understand but you weren't hundred percent wrong, were you? I mean, yeah, but there's no penetration no. there. I was just like, you wear because I had cousins that used to take my Ken and Barbie doll, and before they'd leave, they'd strip them naked. See, and that was the start them, of your sex education. It was. They'd put them in the bed like that. So I just thought, well, the guy wears his undies, and then it's all fine because. But also, so I maybe remember I did understand penetration. But I don't know. In the car coming home, when all these conversations happened. Your brother, who's a couple of years older Let's than you... Let's throw him underneath the bus. He would have sex education and he would start asking questions and then, of course, you would start asking questions. And there's one bit of important advice that my mother always gave me. Mm-hmm. And what is that? If it ain't on, it ain't on. If it's not on, it's not on. Mm. Yeah. Thanks. Very mom. early in the piece. Yeah, very. Still still important. There you go. Thanks, Mum. <laughs>